started with our video, instructional video today about rational and irrational numbers. So it's kind of an important thing to understand the distinction between the two. First of all, though, let's look at a couple of a uh, little bit of review problems. So we're going to talk about is this function linear or nonlinear? And for it to be linear, it has to have a constant rate of change. So we're going to check the change in y over the change in x. So let's look at the change in y first. To go from negative 2 to negative 1, that's an increase of 1. To go from negative 1 to 0, an increase of 1. And to go from 0 to 1, that's also an increase of 1. Well, what about in the x direction? Let's look at a different color here. To go from negative 10 to negative 5 in the x direction, that's an increase of 5. To go from negative 5 to 0, that's an increase of 5. And to go from 0 to 5, that's also an increase of 5. All right, so our change in y over our change in x is 1 fifth all the way across the board here. So that would make this a constant rate of change. And so it is, in fact, a linear function. Now, what about writing an equation for that one? Well, we, uh, when we talk about functions and uh, equations written in function form, we're talking about writing it in y equals the slope or rate of change times x plus or minus wherever this line crosses the y-axis, which is called the y-intercept. So we already know m, which is the slope or the rate of change. So we can write our equation, y equals 1 fifth x. Now if we find where 0 is uh, in the x column, here's 0, that's the same place where you're going to find the y-intercept. So you look down at the y value at that point and it's 0. So the y-intercept is 0. That means this crosses, if you had a graph like this, it's going to cross right through the, uh, it's going to cross right through the origin right there if I could draw a straight line. Okay, so our actual equation then is going to be just y equals one-fifth x. And we don't need to put this part on over here. So there we go. All right, so let's get into rational and irrational numbers. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about all the different kinds of numbers that we use in this class. Uh, and first of all, the first set of uh, numbers that we're going to talk about is natural numbers. And the natural numbers are just the counting numbers starting from 1 and working it our way up to as high as you want to go. Those are the natural numbers right there. Now, if we include 0 in that set, so we got 0 and the natural numbers, then that new set is called the whole numbers. And you'll notice in our Venn diagram that the natural circle is inside of the whole circle meaning that all the natural numbers are also considered whole numbers. Okay, then if we move on to integers. Integers includes in that set of natural and whole numbers all of the negative counting numbers as well. So all the negative counting numbers, 0 and 1, 2, 3, and the positive counting numbers, that makes up the set of integers. And you'll notice that the natural and the whole numbers are, again, within the side of that circle. So they are part of that set of integers. Okay, now we get into rational numbers. That's where rational numbers take on a little bit of new meaning. So a rational number is a number that have, or numbers that end, meaning they don't have a decimal, or they have a decimal that either repeats in some kind of a pattern, or just terminates uh, after a few digits. So the, the decimal either ends right at the end of uh, the decimal in the number, or it can go on a little ways, but as long as it has a pattern, or it can be a repeating decimal. Like, and here's some examples. 7, 1 half, 23.8, 12.1212, or 0.333. Those are all repeating patterns. Or over here, as in the case of 7, a terminating decimal. Okay, now the last set of numbers that we're talking about is the irrational numbers. And the irrational numbers are numbers that represent a non-repeating or non-ending decimal. So these are rather different looking, uh, strange looking numbers. 
one of the classic examples is the number pi. If you look at number pi, you know from experience that pi has a decimal that never ends and never repeats. So it's kind of irrational. It just goes on and on and on and there with, uh, without making any sense. So that's irrational. So any other number that does the same kind of a thing is called an irrational number. So numbers that that are quite popular for irrational numbers are when you take the square root of something that doesn't have a perfect square, like the square root of three, the square root of two, the square root of five. If you did that on your calculator, you would know that you would have a, a, a decimal that, that goes out, never repeats, never terminates, much like the number pi does. Okay, so if you notice the irrational numbers are kind of in a little set by themselves, or these other numbers that we've talked about are kind of uh, related in a many different ways. So all the integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers are also considered rational numbers. They can also be written as a fraction that terminates or repeats. But as you move in, inside, the integers are not, or the, the integers are not fractions. They're just counting numbers. The whole numbers are counting numbers and the natural numbers are counting numbers. So they don't include all of the fractions and decimals in between, which is what the rational numbers do. Okay, let's keep moving forward. So let's try a couple of numbers here. 432.8, would that be rational or irrational? Well, the decimal terminates right there, so that makes it rational. This one, 0, 4.1010, one zero 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 one. Okay, so this is this is going on, and the three dots means it just keeps going out there, but it doesn't say what the pattern is, so this would be considered irrational. Uh, how about number three? Point three one three one 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 three three one. All right, so more three more dots, and so this would be a little bit misleading, but just based on the pattern that we see right here. The, the pattern is changing as you go further and further out. So it doesn't terminate or repeat. So irrational. Square root of seven, that's not a perfect square, meaning that it's just not like two times two or three times three or four times four to get seven, but it's, it's one of those uh, irrational numbers that would be a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. Square root of 52 is the same way, irrational. The square root of 49 equals seven. So, so that would be considered a rational number because it is a decimal that terminates. And uh, there you go. So this one, 0.343434, this is a repeating decimal. So that means this is also a rational number. Here's another one that repeats, 0.33333 or negative 0.333. So this is also the equivalent of negative one-third, and that is considered a rational number. This one terminates at 0.27.2345, so rational number. Square root of 16 equals four. That's a terminating decimal, so that's a rational number. Uh-oh, square root of three goes on forever without terminating or repeating, so that would be considered irrational. And the square root of 36, well, everybody knows that that's a 6, so that makes that a rational number. All right, let's move on. Okay, so let's kind of review just a little bit in a little different way. Let's, uh, let's kind of identify that, that first middle circle then are the natural numbers. Oh, let me get a different set up here. So, so like we said, the first set of numbers is the natural numbers. Then taking in the natural numbers and including the number zero are the whole numbers. And then including all of the whole and natural numbers and all of the negative counting numbers would be the integers. And then, then if you take all the integers, whole numbers and natural numbers and all the, the terminating and repeating decimals that fit in between them, you would have all of the set of rational numbers. And then there's these oddballs that, that uh, don't terminate or repeat. They are called irrational numbers. All right, so let's look at some of these numbers. So 18, 18 would be considered a rational number, and 18 could fall in the category of being a natural number. 
So does 11, and it also includes whole and integers as well, and rational. Negative 27, that is a negative counting number, so we'll just put that in the integer set, but it's outside of the whole and natural numbers, which both have to be a zero or above. Uh, 1 11th, that is a fraction, a uh, pretty small number, but that would be considered a rational number. It's not a counting number. And a negative 0. 0.4444, that's also another rational number. So all of these turned out to be, oops, I put that in the wrong place. I got to move that inside there. These all turned out to be rational numbers or integers, whole or natural. We didn't have any irrational numbers in that little set there. Okay, moving on. Say, what we want, something we want you to be able to do is, this might be a little bit of a review, is to convert these decimals to fractions. So to do that, all you need to do is grab a little marker, put a line under there, and then this four terminates in the hundredths column. So that's just going to be 34 one hundredths. Now all that's left to do now is to simplify. And if I divide both of those by 2, I would get 17 fiftieths. And if I'm not mistaken, that's about as far as we can simplify that number. So that would be the first one. The second one, we're going to have uh, negative 578 over 1,000 because... That 8 term is in the 1,000th column, so that means we have negative 578 thousandths. All right, so now we need to simplify this one. So on your calculator, you'll just do 578 fraction key 1,000, and you end up with 289 over 500. So that equals negative 289 over 500. So if you were going to write any other fraction or decimal as a fraction, you'd use this same process. All right, what about 1,250? Well, if we write that uh, as a fraction, let's do that. 1, 2, 5, 0 divided by uh, 10 hundred thousandths, that's, that's over 10,000, that's a huge number. All right, now let's go ahead and simplify. We notice they both end in zero, so we can divide by 10, and that gives us 125 over 1,000. So on your calculator, or if you want to divide by five, whatever works for you, 125 ABC 1,000, and you end up with a fractional value of one-eighth. That's what one-eighth looks like as a big decimal here. So there's your answer on, on the third one. And then the last one here, negative 425 over 1,000. All right, so I would, I would take my calculator and just... Uh, Put that in to simplify it. So 425 fraction key over 1,000 is 17 fortieths. And we know that this number is negative. So this is going to be negative 17 fortieths. So there's how you write a fraction or write a decimal as a fraction. And in the future lesson, we'll actually show you how to write a deep repeating decimal into a fraction as well. But we don't want to do both of those today. Okay, another thing that you might encounter on uh, today's assignment is ordering these numbers from least to greatest. These are all decimals. So probably the easiest way to do this is just to look at the first digit behind the decimal point. One, one, five, five, and six. And we want to go from least to greatest. So we know that these two are going to be competing for the least. So let's look at those two. Let's, let's look at the next digit, 6 and 5. Since 5 is smaller than 6, 
that means that this number itself is smaller than 0.165. So this one's going to come first. 0.151 followed by 0.165. So we've used up those two, and now we're on to the next three numbers here. So we, we have 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.6. So right now we're looking at this one. This one's going to be the biggest, 0 0.605, just because it's got a bigger tenth digit than the other two. And on these two, we've got 0.5 something, and this has a 0.56, this has a 0.52, if you look at just the next, the second digit in our number. So that's going to mean that this one is the next one that we're going to use, 0 0.052. And our last one, 0 0.5610. So that's how we go about arranging numbers from least to greatest if they're just decimals. And you could have also turned all of those into a fraction, like we did on the previous page, and compared the fractions. Whatever works best for you. So those are the kind of problems we're going to see on today's assignment. So your assignment is um, rational and irrational numbers, part one, in Alex. So good luck and have a good time.